Can start. Okay, uh, when showing rollers, there's just SA distance rollers, there's two different classes. Um, there's a class called grouse feathered feet and muff, muffed feathered feet. Yes. Now, the standard for muffed feet is it needs to be five centimeters preferably. The length of the feather, five centimeters preferably. Anything shorter than that is considered as a grouse feather. Or oh, anything under five centimeters. Anything under five centimeters. Correct. Now, at a show, you can always take a chance. If you don't have five centimeter muffs, yes. but you've got a four centimeter muff, it is still quite visible and can be called a muffed feet. But a real grouse feathered foot pigeon, like the black pigeon here, yeah, it's basically just over a centimeter. So it can cannot be called a muffed pigeon. Okay, muffs must be dominantly visible on the feet, like that pigeon there. Now there you're looking at a five centimeter minimum muffed feet. Okay, if I move it around a bit, you see the other leg. Come on, come on, come on, come on. If you somehow take it out and hold it in my hand, if I hold it like this. And you look at that. Now, if you know how big a centimeter is, a centimeter is probably the width of my finger. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Got to it. the end. Okay. Now well, that's a muff. Yeah, this is a muff pigeon, yeah. This is muff. Anything that does not come past the foot clearly, at least four centimeters, you can't really call a muff bird. So um, with the rings, which rings do you use for muffs? Which rings do you? How many? How many millimeters? Currently, I use the the standard rings that the Federation supply. Yes. I only have to ring the birds very, very early. Oh. I ring the, these muff pigeons on about three days old. I put the rings on already. Oh. Because good. as soon as you breed bigger muffs, the feet. And leg, well, the legs actually also tend to get thicker. Oh, you okay. breed a pigeon with a thicker type leg, of course, to carry those big muffed feathers because there's, the shafts are bigger. The shaft of those foot feathers are bigger than the normal little grouse. In the old days, we called it socks. It wasn't feather feet pigeon, it had socks. It just had those little feathers on the feet called it socks. Oh, good. Okay, so for instance, this little white head at the bottom here, I can 
put her also in the show ring as a pigeon with muffs. Because if I, it doesn't look as long as the tortoiseshell bird, but if I measure it from the leg to the tip, it will also be five centimeters. Oh. Okay. Okay, um. <coughs> Okay. Yes. So. Hmm. Okay. I think I don't have questions. I don't have more questions. Okay, um. Happy. Um. Yeah. Oh, this one has got too many feathers. That's too many feathers to look for. Wait, wait a little fear, man. Wait a little fear, man. What day is it? Yes. It's very difficult to see. Now, you normally you need two hands. You can take it away like that. So that's where I vaccinate. Right there. Yes, I see it on camera. You can see it there. Yeah. Okay. Why do you vaccinate that one? PMV1. And, not, one and, not the, and why not the back on? Because a lot of people vaccinate the, the, the at back the back. Of the neck. Yes. No, it's too, for me it's too risky. At the back of the neck, if I make a mistake and the pigeon jerks, I can hurt much more nerves and do the pigeon arm than vaccinating it there on the inside leg, just under the skin. Maybe this bird, if I touch the muscle, it might limp oh. for a day or three, but it's fine. But as soon as you start vaccinating in the neck, okay, you can you can possibly vaccinate accurately, but if you make a mistake in the neck, it can be fatal. It can be fatal. So I don't play around with needles in pigeons' necks. So Got it. I don't do that. They still tend to breed some. Okay. Now these pigeons to me are of no use in the show pen because the show pen uh, requires that you don't have drop wings. The pigeons' wings must be on top of the tail. Okay. So. This little hen, she tends to drop her wings. You look at that and this cock as well. A lot of these pigeons has never been in this lot, so uh, excuse them if they tend to be a bit wild. But that's normally what these birds look like. Even if they walk outside, the wings are below the tail. Okay, so unfortunately I do breed some of them. Um, if they are good in the air, and uh, I find a lot of pleasure out of them, I tend to keep them. Uh, you'll see that they are in the minority. These are the only two pigeons out of my whole loft at this moment that's got drop wings. Okay, so uh, my personal preference, as I said, I look for vibrancy and I look for quality. Quality and feather, clean pigeons. I don't want a pigeon that's sitting crouched, um, trying to hide away the whole time. Um, I'm looking for a bird that performs. Now, what is this the red splash cock? What does he show you? He shows you liveliness, vibrancy. It's a very relaxed bird. He's first time in this environment. He's never been in these little cages. Um, if you look at this cock, this cock has been here before, but he's totally relaxed. He shows you vibrancy. He shows you power, okay, it's a very good bird, okay. Um, if we can get back to the tortoiseshell, the bird, you can see clearly, is nervous. This is not how the bird looks in the loft, okay. So he's nervous, he's not as vibrant, he's not as relaxed, okay. You look at the mottled cock, mottled cock's a nice streamlined cock, okay. Um, height on the legs is not too bad. Um, sl slightly high for my liking. Uh, I like them a bit closer to the ground. Okay, and um, uh, in general vision, that's what I can can mention about these birds. If you look at the blue end at the bottom, okay, very nice balanced birds. Length of the legs, that's what the length is. I prefer the tail doesn't touch the ground when the pigeon is standing stands at about 15 to 20 degrees uh, with the chest up 
okay, uh, if you look at the breast, neck, back uh, uh, line forming, it's nice, there's, uh, there's harmony in it, uh, there's no breakage, uh, you don't have a thin neck with a big head, uh, it's all in balance.